Welcome to our next video on Humanoid AI in Unity. In this video, let's start building our testbed for AI experiments. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the Clockworks Games YouTube channel if you find this interesting and would like to hear about new videos as they come out. I mentioned in the introduction to this series that almost 40 years ago, I spent a summer writing assembly language code to get a 3D human model to just walk around. That was the state of home computing at the time. There weren't any game engines, and for that matter, nothing was actually in 3D, short of just implementing all the necessary math from first principles. Over the years, as computers got better and more powerful, and game engines like Unity became readily available, that changed a lot. About six years ago, when I was organizing a local Unity meetup group, I made a video called Creating a Walking Robot in 20 Minutes. Some of the details have changed a little since I made that video, so this video is going to be an update, and what we make will be the starting point for setting up our AI testbed. This is going to be a demonstration of loading an environment from the Unity Asset Store, loading a human model, rigging the model, adding animation, an animation controller, and a moving camera. I'm not going to explain every small detail because there are lots of good tutorials available on the fundamentals of Unity. I am going to try to break my record to do all of this in less than 20 minutes. Okay, so I am doing all of this from scratch. First, I create a new Unity project. I am using version 2018.4 because that is compatible with the Unity standard assets. I will call the project Walking Robot. For an environment, I will load the Polygon City Pack from the Unity Asset Store. Let's open its demo scene, and we'll work with that. I am adjusting the scene view to show the same as the game view. I don't really like how the environment has so many objects at the top of the hierarchy. So I'm creating a new top-level object called City Environment. And then putting the whole city under that. One of the reasons I chose this environment is that roads and sidewalks are separate objects. Many environments don't do that, but it will be important when we put in AI pathfinding later on and want walking on sidewalks to be favored over walking on roads. Next, I'm loading the Unity standard assets. I don't need everything, just cameras and characters And those require cross-platform input and utilities. Finally, I will load Space Robot Kyle. In the last video, I showed how to rig Robot Kyle for humanoid animation, so I'm doing that again. The important thing is to set its animation type to humanoid, and then an avatar is created. Then I put Kyle into the environment.
I'm giving Kyle a capsule collider so that he has substance and doesn't pass through solid objects. I need to adjust the capsule to approximately fit Kyle. Then I add a rigid body to Kyle so that he obeys the laws of physics, at least approximately. I set constraints that Kyle cannot rotate in X or Z, which means he can't topple over. The 3D axes in Unity have Y as the vertical axis, so Kyle can still rotate to move in different directions. So now to animate Kyle. The first step is to create an animation controller which I will call Robot Controller, and then assign that to Kyle in the inspector. Then I can look at the Robot Controller in the Animator window. The standard assets that I imported before have some humanoid animation clips. If I just drag the idle animation into the animator controller, I can then run this and Kyle, in fact, has the idle animation. So let's add more animations. I will control Kyle's animation through two parameters called direction and speed. It's easy to add turning by dragging the left turn and right turn animation clips to the animator controller. I will add transitions between the idle and turning states and set these transitions to be triggered by the direction parameter. The parameter will range from negative 1 to positive 1, and then positive and negative 0 0.5 will be the thresholds for changing state. It's important to uncheck the Has Exit Time option so that the transition can happen at any time rather than at the end of the animation clip. To make this all work, I do need a small C Sharp script that I will call Robot Walk Script. I have a variable that references the animator component and in the start function I get the reference to the animator. This is the same animator component that we can see in the inspector that is part of the robot Kyle game object. In the update function, I get a value for the horizontal axis and send it to the animator controller's direction parameter that I had defined before. Where is the horizontal axis defined? By default, Unity has this horizontal axis under the input settings, and the horizontal axis is mapped to the left and right arrow keys, or A and D. Likewise, there is a vertical axis mapped 
to the up and down arrows or the S and W keys. And the direction parameter is the same one already defined in the animator controller. Let's run this and I can make Robot Kyle turn using the arrow keys. Of course, I want Robot Kyle to be able to walk forward, not just turn. I add a blend tree to the animator controller called Robot Walk. I add transitions from and to the idle state triggered by the speed parameter being above or below 0.5. Next, I will edit the details of the blend tree. I will add three animation clips to the blend tree. It will blend on the direction parameter ranging from negative one to positive one. I drag in the animation clips from the standard assets for walk, walk left, and walk right. I can preview that and see the effect of adjusting the direction parameter to make Kyle swerve left and swerve right as he walks. I need to add a couple of lines to the C-sharp script to take the value from the vertical axis and send it to the animator controller's speed parameter. Let's run this. Does it work? Nope. Kyle can turn, but not walk. So what did I do wrong? There's a small bug in the C-sharp script. Let's try again. Now Kyle can walk around. He can't walk through solid objects because of the capsule collider that I added before, and that makes sense. Finally, let's add a camera that follows Kyle around instead of just having the stationary camera. I dragged the multi-purpose camera rig from the standard assets. I disable the old camera. I set Kyle to be its target. I also set the turn speed to be higher than the default value or else the camera rig rotates too slowly. When I run again, I can again control Kyle from the keyboard, and the camera follows him around. Kyle still can't pass through solid objects, which makes sense.
I would like to move the camera a bit closer. I can adjust the camera's pivot. Z is the distance to Kyle, and Y is the height of the camera. Save those settings, stop the game from running, and paste those settings back in. Now, we have an interesting testbed with a humanoid character that we can control in an interesting environment, although the control is manual through the keyboard. Going forward, we'll start adding AI capabilities as an alternative to directly controlling the character. So that took about 15 minutes, slightly faster than before when I spent 20 minutes running a similar demonstration. In that time, I was able to load a nice looking environment from the Unity Asset Store, rig a humanoid character, add an animation controller with animation clips, and write a C-sharp script for manual control of the character, and use a standard camera script for following the character. There's a lot of building blocks here that we will use in future videos for AI experiments. After this, I'm going to make one more preliminary video to compare and evaluate the human models and animation clips that we can easily get. In videos beyond that, we'll jump into topics of AI. Please leave comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you would like to see in future videos. And if you thought this was interesting, please do like and subscribe. See you in the next video on Humanoid AI in Unity.